you. I'm Chris Wynn. Welcome to Chris Wynn Talks. Um, Wynn, Wynn's World Podcast, excellent, um, presents an amazing guy tonight, man. I'm super pumped on this whole thing. It's going to be, it's going to be rad. Um, first off, foremost, man, um, this is all for fun, man. We don't talk about politics. We don't talk about religion. If you're one of those armchair warriors, man, who loves to get on your keyboard and talk shit, stay the fuck home, okay? We don't need it. There's enough people out there talking smack. This is a positive spin. These are positive tattoo stories from tattooers who have been tattooing over 20 years. The reason that I'm doing this is because of the fact that I would like to archive this so that it will last forever. And we know that we've had many, many great tattooers pass on, um, recently. Um, and, uh, that's a shame that we don't have more history from them. The stories that's, that's really what this is about, man. For us, we love to tattoo. Um, that goes without saying we miss tattooing, but in the long haul, what really is important, man, is the time that we spend in the tattoo shop. We are so blessed to be able to do what we do every day and get to serve the public the way that we get to serve and that they get to wear our art for everything. You know, the customers are, are, are amazing. And But the banter between tattooers, um, it that's one of the things that we miss dearly. Everybody. Everybody who's been on this thing has, has said, said the same thing. It's really a shame that um, that uh, we're not opening up sooner. But at this point in time, you know, it is what it is, man. Um, hopefully everybody knows what's going on. Uh, and I mean the powers that be. And uh, we will get back to our jolly lo- little lives in the tattoo shop Um as we speak tonight, as he just joins, um, amazing guy, amazing tattooer, amazing machine builder. Um, he, he's a man and everybody, my Godfrey. Hey dude, what's up? What's going on? Hey brother. How have you been, man? I'm good. Good. Glad to be on here with you. Hey man, excellent dude. I'm um, thank you for being on here, man. What I, you're? It looks like you're at the tattoo shop. Yes, sir. Always. <laughs> dude, I miss the tattoo shop so much. A bit, dude. I, I I can't even wait to get back there, man. And um, man, it looks like you have quite the collection up behind you. That's 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 badass. It's good to see a tattoo shop. Yeah, it's good to be in one, whether I'm tattooing or not. <laughs> I get you, man. I get you. So, hey, man, let's um, let's start off a little bit, man. If, you know, a lot of people know who you are, know what you do. You know what I mean? Your 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 machines are world renowned, man, for sure. Thank you. Um, your tattoos are seriously on point. So, you know what I mean? Where did where did you start, brother? You know what I mean? Like. Well, my apprenticeship was under J.R. Grove, which was Mike Pike's stepdad. And uh, I was with him for a couple of years. And then I went over to Mike Pike's shop after that with JoJo. What up, JoJo? Those guys over there. And I was we were together for 12 years before I went anywhere else after that. And just being there in the early 90s and tattooing really changing at that time period especially in like the bay area because we were in southern california you know right. you have all these amazing guys coming out of the bay area doing all this incredible stuff you know and it really <sighs> kept us on our game and then oh my god working with mike and jojo for so many years i mean jojo's a maniac you know he's oh, without a doubt constantly so it was what's up it was great to have good influence around you, keeping you up all the time. Yeah. And it, and so you, did you get most of your, um, machine building skills 
from JR or Mike or how how did that come about? Um, I didn't really do any machine stuff with Mike's dad. Um, I was still pretty young in the business, you know. It was yeah, yeah. once I got over to Mike's shop after the first couple of years is when most of that started. And anything I ever learned from the beginning was from Mike, you know, definitely. Right. Even as far as influential tattooing and being an artist and things like that didn't really start until I was there at Psycho City. Cool. That's very cool, man. How long were you there? Uh, at Psycho City, 12 years. Very cool, man. So you got to work with the both of them for that, that whole period of time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I, I knew both of them before then, even like Jojo and I were roommates before we were tattooers when we were in punk rock bands back in the day. You know, he, tell, he was telling me that that was cool. I was, I was stoked when he just said that stuff. Yeah. And like Mike Pike tattooed my mom when I was 15. So, and I was there at the shop when it happened and that was actually at his dad's shop. So rad, rad Echo city. So what year did you start your apprenticeship? Um, it was late 91. Very cool. So I started tattooing somewhere in the beginning of 92. Red. And that was pretty much standard, right? About that time. Um, uh, <laughs> dude, I can't see Mike's face. You guys need to back the fuck up. <laughs> Robert, man, he's like, oh, back it up like a truck, man. Oh, man. So there, there you go. Dude, Robert <laughs> just fucking loves us so much, man, that he wants to see our faces, man. He's like, oh, dude, just get the fuck back, man. Quit getting so close. My chair's pretty low. <laughs> dude, that's one of the things that always trips me out, man, about uh, chairs now, man. They don't go low enough anymore. Yeah. I'm a low rider when it comes down to tattooing. And yes, I do smoke in my tattoo shop, and I don't give a fuck. So, and this. Oh, that's cool, man. Pacificos? <laughs> Not that's yeah. bad. See my shirt, Robert? Jackalope Ooh. Lounge, Salt Lake City. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so let, let's just, uh, let's get in. Um, oh, damn, he's smoking. <laughs> let's get into... Um, uh, the machine aspect of, of what you do, you know what I mean? Like uh, what year do you think you really started getting into like wanting to, to kind of, obviously, you know, with Mike, you know, you were probably inundated with all kinds of information about mm -hmm. building and about machining and all that stuff. But when did you get the bug? Cause like, with, like with me, man, I love tattoo machines, dude. Mm -hmm. I love them. And I can tune them, and I can run them, and you know what I mean? I can I can do all that stuff, man. I can put them together and tear them apart, whatever. But the, the actual genetic makeup of a, uh, of a tattoo machine is, is, is pretty intense, man. So when did you catch that bug? Well, I'd have to say, like, all through the mid-'90s, through the early 2000s, we were all going to Mike's machine shop, working on stuff, right. doing stuff here and there. You know, it wasn't nothing real serious. Um, I think it was 2009, 2008 or nine, when Mike talked me into designing my own side plates and actually really doing it on my own just because he knew I was about it and I was going to do it properly, you know? Right. So that's probably when I got real serious and real busy with all that stuff. Yeah. And, and I mean, there's, there's tons of machine builders out there and tons of machines. You stand at the top with a lot of them. I know many guys that use your stuff, man, and will swear by your name all day long, which you know what I mean? It's just amazing. But when it comes down to tattoo machines, um, how, how do you, how do you feel? Um, you know, when it, uh, what do you feel a good builder accomplishes? Cause I know everybody's kind of doing something different. Uh, that's a tough question. I guess shit. If 
people are using your machines, you're doing something right. You know? Yeah. I, I always told people that if you're going to be serious about buying tattoo machines from a tattooer, I'd say look at their tattoos. If they yeah. do great tattoos, they know what a tattoo machine should do. You right. know, regardless of your style of tattooing or how you use it, you know, you should know how to do a tattoo if you're going to build a tattoo machine. Yeah. I, and I agree, man. I, I agree. And, um, and, and I love the, the design and stuff that you guys are fucking, that, that you, that you roll with, with your line. You know what I mean? Um, of tattoo machines, man. Side plates look wicked, man. The, the, the design all the way through and through is pretty damn flawless, man. They're beautiful pieces of machinery. I appreciate it. Yeah. I totally. do what I can do. <laughs> How many, how many, how many machines do you build like in a, uh, let's say a week, man? I mean, oh, now not too many, you know, I got yeah. so busy with that. Um, I think it was 2011 through 2014 ish. I was so busy and backed up with all of that stuff that I got kind of burnt out on it and just dealing with all the other madness that goes with it to where right. I actually stopped building for two years straight. And then, oh, wow. Now I just got back into kind of building more, but just kind of depends. If I have people asking for them, I'll build them. If I right. got nothing else to do, I'll go to the machine shop and just build some stuff up and sell it, you know, nothing too right. serious. Yeah, I get you, man. Let me ask, so back into tattooing, man. What's your favorite shit to tattoo? Hmm. Anything large scale, black and gray or Japanese style stuff. Always love doing just regular American traditional stuff, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, and you know, man, I always feel like that that's one of the things that like literally you know, all all the badasses through the test of time have always stuck it stuck to those three major you know, um subject matter man the black and gray fine line stuff man american traditional japanese man i love all that stuff you know so that's kind of what i try to focus on and i try to focus on especially man like with uh with japanese i like i like the older shit the yeah. really old stuff you know what i mean i love its fucking simplicity because it it that's i get i kind of always figure like th that's what fucking ed hardy was like oh whoa you know what i mean like this is cool you know what i mean yeah. Yeah. It's, and the whole Japanese thing was great for me. Just, of course, being around Jojo and seeing Robert's work and things like that and having the chance to hang around with Yvonne Shazi from Brazil, coming to the shop, things like that, and going and doing guest spots with Henning Jorgensen in Denmark. It really nice. got to where I could kind of pick apart things and try and make my own thing out of it and have somewhat of my own style as far as that goes. So I definitely, I love doing that. And pretty much That's anything cool. I do now, I'm going to draw it on you. It, I'm not going to make a stencil. Oh, you just draw, just draw it straight on. Yeah. That's rad, dude. I love doing that, man. I, I just, you know, it, it seems to be <laughs> Robert. <laughs> Yeah, totally, dude. Of course we're old, Robert. That's why we're talking to each other, you fucker. But, um, uh, you know, one of the things that uh, that I love is that that draw-on, man. I, You know, I used to do about, you know, 80% of my stuff was all drawn, you know, because every, I was doing traditional stuff, and you had to fit that shit in a fucking certain spot, man, and, and you couldn't really get that same feel on any kind of piece of paper. Now, you know, with the iPads, they're snapping pictures and, you know what I mean? And, and doing it that way. Uh, and yeah, dude, mostly Chris, mostly Chris is old. Yeah. Thanks Robert. I love you, man. Um, you got a little but, more gray going on there. Than I do, yeah, dude. I don't know what this thing fucking just comes in like this too, dude. It's fucking crazy. But, um, but like I've even gone back to just drawing on paper, you know, when I'm sketching now, you know, I got to be the got to the point, man, where I started getting into that that whole iPad thing, and that and it's cool, it's got its place, you know what I mean? But dude, it's just drawing is drawing on a 
piece of paper. It's, you know what I mean? Yeah. I feel so fucking stressed out when I have my iPad and I'm not looking at porn or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, dude, I'm like, oh, what? You want me to? And, and, the, and, and dude, I don't, I don't get how you can fucking draw a fucking sleeve on an 11 by 14. Platform. Yeah. I've seen people do it. I still don't personally even own an iPad. So I've seen a lot of great stuff come off of them. And I've had friends oh, yeah, tell yeah. me recently, of course, like, oh, look what you can do. I'm just like, oh, shit. But I still just I can't bring myself to do it yet. <laughs> yeah, man. As a matter of fact, man, a couple of weeks ago, dude, I ordered so much paper, man, that I just and, I, and it feels so fucking good, man. You know what I mean? It just feels it just has. You know, it just has that texture. Also, one thing that, um, uh, you know, I think JoJo tapped in on this is that when you draw on paper, you have fucking something tangible. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? You can fucking download the new fucking whatever album from Apple or iTunes or whatever. But when you have a CD, man, or you have a record or you have something, you have, dude, it's it's the physical presence of that. Yeah. You know, I started hanging up all my drawings and stuff again, man. And I'm like, oh, wow. You know what I mean? And watching them. And and the craziest thing is when you're doing that, you start watching them build. And instead of like going through your iPad and going, where is that fucking, where is that fucking thing? (laughs) Fucking fuck fuck this. I'm going to go get a beer. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, um, but I love the tangibility of that as well, you know, And, and a couple of my clients have, uh, have asked me for their stencils and stuff like, or, you know what I mean? Their, their actual, uh, the drawings and stuff like that. Hell, I asked, I, I got the one that Jojo did around my neck. Nice. You know? So I was like, Oh, Hey, Hey, hey uh, uh, can, uh, dude, what are, what are you going to do with that shit? <laughs> 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 well, I guess I'm going to give it to you is probably what he said. You know what I mean? Or whatever. So the tattoo is definitely way better than the drawing is what you're saying. <laughs> Yeah, well, that, dude, they're both amazing, man. I just, I, I just went out and bought a bunch of frames, man, and had a had some frames shipped to me because of the fact that I've just, been, I've just been going through shit, and and like as I've been going through shit, I'm finding all this old shit, dude. Like literally, like my first sheet of flash that I ever did, yeah, at Burt Grimm's with Not, Rick, yeah. You know what I mean? It's just like oh. Oh shit! You know what I mean? Like, what the <laughs> fuck? I'm like, this is horrible. <laughs> oh yeah, I have oh, all of my original Flash here at the tattoo shop, and it was yeah. like, straight up early '90s on Bristol with Prisma Color, fucking just. Oh yeah, dude. That's dude. My whole first, <laughs> my whole first set that I did probably, I think I did my first set at Realistic with at working for Catfish. And I did it all black and gray with Prismacolor pencils. <laughs> nice. I went through like fucking 10 white pencils, man, trying to shade that shit out. And I was like, <laughs> what the fuck, man? What the, you know what I mean? It's like, oh, Jesus fucking Christ. But, um, and then, then, then Ron Hoffman, when he took it over, dude, he sends me a couple of pictures. And he's like, look at this shit. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, man, can you burn that stuff, bro? Dude, that shit is horrible. <laughs> all eagle globes and anchors and fucking bull you know fucking bulldogs and fuck you name it terrible (laughs) tribal usmc (laughs) you know what i mean like dude that's fucking awesome but um but yeah man i mean that, that tangibility of having something is is really cool yeah that's one thing i do miss about because I have been drawing on everything for so long now that not yes. having that stockpile of drawings, like most of the drawings I have hanging up in the drawing room here are from paintings because I'll right. draw those on tracing paper first. But other than that, tattoos, there's not many at all. Yeah, I get you. And you know, man, the thing about it is, is that like, no matter whether it is a painting or whatever, it is a tangible good. You got something there. You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. you know, and how, do you paint a lot? Not as much as I used to. Um, yeah. 
I try to. I kind of go on spurts to where I'll paint a lot and then not at all for quite some time. And, right. Uh, but I also I'll do oil paintings, watercolor paintings, all that stuff. So yeah. um, I tend to steer more towards the oil paintings because it's more loose and just more relaxing for me instead of trying right. to do something completely perfect on illustration board with a nib and a brush. You know, it's just a whole different thing, which I don't do. I love doing that as well. And I've done many of them, but just not so yeah. much anymore. Yeah, I get you, man. So your art, you, so that that style of art is definitely going more towards the oils and and bigger canvases and more loose fucking laid out shit. Yeah, yeah, cool. Definitely. That's cool, dude. When I was looking at those pictures that you sent and that fucking dragon up on the wall, I think that's your banner. That you, you you painted that in oils, didn't you? Yeah, <laughs> the fucking thing is ridiculous, man. It's huge. <laughs> Yeah, I, I did that for the uh, this past Salt Lake City convention because I, I really love the guys out there and the convention and always love to just show up and represent, you know, and I even yeah. I took all my guys from the shop and I made sure they all painted a banner this year. Right. So of right. course, I to do an oil painting to kind of bring it up a notch but <laughs> of course you did man of course but you did they, no, they no. fucking my guys killed it though and it was got a great response from people so that's all that yeah. mattered i've always wanted to do that show i've never done that show that's great that's amazing dude i always hear hear good things about it i was uh, i got i was gonna go out with six one time and go and do it but uh Something happened with my ex-wife, as something always did happen with my ex-wife. <laughs> he is my ex-wife. So, um, and I didn't get a chance to go, and I really regret that, man. You know what I mean? Because I, I hear it's a great show. Yeah, it really is. The people that put it on, Nate Drew and those guys out at Lost Art out there, they're just, I love Salt Lake City. I spend a lot of time there, for sure. That's rad, man. That's rad. I'm I'm definitely looking for my my buddy Yanni just just went out there and um uh he's been really happy out there, I guess, man. So I'm st I'm stoked for that. Yeah, it's a good time always. Yeah, I'm d definitely gonna try to fucking show up next year, man, and just you better be just, ready to fucking party, <laughs> dude. I'm drinking. <laughs> dude, somebody just said, man, Chris is drinking moonshine. No, I'm drinking. <laughs> Drinking vodka sodas, bro, with a little splash of lime, baby. <laughs> oh, fan! I want to have to pee. I, I would have a couple of Modelos because it's almost fuck. It's almost Cinco de Mayo, but uh, <laughs> I'm an old man. I pee a fucking lot. So, anyways, <laughs> but anyways, so man, what what would you say is probably one of your most memorable moments in tattooing? Um, either meeting somebody or like, uh, you know, getting to work with somebody or whatever. Oh, wow. I think there's too many of those actually in this business to even say, I think, yeah. um, I, you know, I got to spend quite a bit of time with Rick, of course, when I was in Huntington beach, um, yeah, for being able to hang out, I think. One great moment was when Bill Salmon opened his street shop there in Frisco. Being there for that weekend was pretty amazing. The people that were there, you know. Oh, yeah. Uh, I get it. I've got a lot of great memories from this business. It's real hard to choose a favorite, I think. Yeah, you know, man, and that's one of the things that, that I think that we're so blessed is that we have so many of those moments. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's just, it's like just the life that we get to live, man, and get to run around and fucking act like maniacs and party all, you know what I mean? And I mean, dude, it's, it's unheard of in any other business. Yeah, for sure. I mean, fuck, when I started tattooing, I had no idea I was going to travel the world doing it. That's for damn sure. Oh. And I've Isn't that crazy? see so many places and <clears throat> work alongside so many great people. And it's been amazing. For sure. Cannot complain. 
Yeah, that's that's rad. And that's one of the things that's really, really cool about what we do is to, that we get to travel and we get to fucking go to these cool places and tattoo and and uh, and all the sh- shenanigans that go along with it. And, you know, it's really fucking amazing. Yeah. It's really amazing. Yeah, it is such a blessing, man. Space hustle. Dude, love that guy. But anyways, man, so let me... Let me ask you this: a simple question, man. What the fuck do you do today? What I do today? Hmm. Uh, not much. <laughs> I was hanging out at the shop, paying bills, and drinking beer, smoking cigarettes, kind of waiting on this interview because this isn't typically my thing. I've never been interviewed, not even for a magazine. So, not the biggest talker so <laughs> ah dude you're, you're doing you're doing great man you're doing great and i appreciate you jumping on with us tonight and just you know letting us letting us get a little glimpse at your beautiful fucking self bro oh <laughs> oh and you know man that's one of the reasons that i love doing this bro is because I, you know what i mean we've met before Mm-hmm. But we've never really got to fucking hang out and spend time. And you, you know what I mean? You spent shit tons of time with my dad. You know what I mean? Rick Walters, you know what I mean? We've, we've been around the, the, the same people, man, all that time, but never really had the one-on-one. Yeah. And it's been really cool. Like, dude, I've loved this last week and a half or whatever that we've talked every couple of days, you know what I mean? And we're just shooting the fucking shit and whatever, man. It's just been, it's just been great, dude. Yeah. Good so time. thank you, bro, man. I, I appreciate it, man. I, I you know, I, dude, I really do appreciate it. Yeah, good times, yeah. man, for sure. Well, man, you know what I mean? That's one of the fucking things, man, is that, would, dude, we're running out of fucking good times right at the moment, man. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, with that shit being said, man, I mean, like, have they given you guys any kind of date on when you guys are, are opening up? Uh, supposedly... Well, Friday, the governor extended it 60 more days. So they're saying July here. So I don't know if that's really going to happen. It's fucking hard to say. I just actually posted something on my yep. story, which I don't typically get into that kind of stuff. But um, after her announcement on Friday, on Sunday, they reported that there was 92 um, confirmed hospitalized cases of the virus in all of the state of Oregon. So out of 4.3 million population, there's 92 confirmed cases. And what did that, that doctor said? If, if you're in California, you have 0.00003% chance exactly. of dying from this fucking shit. And the thing with me, like Oregon has always been known for many, many years. It's really hard to get licensed here to open a tattoo shop or do tattoos because it's heavily regulated through the health authority. So if there's a business that's regulated that heavily through them with that percentage of people sick in the hospital, why should we not be able to open? That's ridiculous. Yeah. So I get you. I get you. But and we're going to have to fucking go through this whole thing no matter what, man. And and um I was te- te- I was just texting earlier with one of my buddies in Texas and they're 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 looking at opening within the next 15 days, mm-hmm. but some of the owners are going to going to hold off till probably June 1st just to make sure everything is fucking safe and hunky dory, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not too worried about it not being safe. <laughs> Well, that's one of the things that's been really crazy, man. And you know what I mean? Without getting into the politics of this whole fucking thing. But, um, dude, they're opening up fucking Disneyland, bro. But you know what I mean? I, I was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Did you just say you're opening up Disneyland? <laughs> yeah. Have you been to Disneyland? That place is a, f- dude, just little kids' hands everywhere. Dude, old people. You know what I mean? Like. I'm going to Disneyland for at least two years, and I love that place, man. But you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, yeah. I I, and it's been really kind of a bummer, man. That we that 
we who have been practicing that shit for so long, I mean, with our bloodborne pathogens and, and just making sure that everything is fucking safe since the days when we were fucking no gloves in a bucket, you know what I mean? And shit like that. Yeah. I mean, we've, we've come a long fucking way, man. You know what I mean? I'm glad, I, I'm glad I missed that no gloves part. <laughs> yeah i dude i only did it about three times yeah and only because and that was the thing is that only because rick was like oh you gotta try this <laughs> yeah. go, what he's like yeah dude he also he dude the funniest thing was man like my third tattoo right my third tattoo rick lets this fucking punk rock guy that lives up above the tattoo shop come down right and man and he's he he wants this fucking huge this huge um celtic circle and he's all like hey man just get that shit man you can do that shit don't worry about it man blah 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 Dude, I wiped that fucking stencil off two thirds of the way fucking through it and fucking <laughs> took me three and a half hours to replace that stencil, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Rick just laughing the whole fucking time. Just oh, had yeah. the fucking whole time. Yeah. I was super lucky he didn't point a gun at me that time and just oh, be yeah. like, dumbass. <laughs> you know? Somebody, uh, one of the guys from, uh, from Australia sent me some pictures of when he visited Bert Grimm's back in 2003. And dude, he has a picture of him sitting there with a with Rick pointing a fucking gun at him. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm like, oh, oh yeah. lucky fucker. Rick was fun, man. He's, I wish I had known him for longer than I did, you know, but uh, the first time I actually met him, he introduced himself because I was with Mike and Mike's dad, who I had learned from. And right. Rick actually told me the story about uh, Mike's dad is the one that actually got Rick his job on the pike. Oh, yeah. Down oh yeah there. you know he had a oh, yeah. huge tattoo on his stomach from mike's dad and it was oh yeah that big fucking story, great, you know because yeah. mike's dad never got into that kind of conversation as far as oh i came from here i know this guy i know that guy it was just yeah come to work and do tattoos and i'm gonna fuck with you pretty much you know right so it was cool to <clears throat> actually hear that story from rick the first time i met him you know yeah, totally. And that's one of the things, man, is that, fuck, man, I swear to God, I've heard so many stories from that guy. Dude. I mean, just, oh, yeah, that big ass chopper on his fucking stomach, dude. <laughs> dude, that guy, I swear to God, I miss him every, every day. Yeah. It was great while I was in Huntington Beach because uh, Tuesdays, was Rick's day off and he lived close by the tattoo shop there in Huntington beach. And, uh, so he was at the tattoo shop every Tuesday, you know, we'd go to Tommy burgers and get fucking chili burgers and just hang out and shoot the shit. You know, it was great. Yeah. 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 And that's one of the things that like, with having uh, Rick as my dad and watching, watching him throughout the years, I mean that he's a tattooer. Yeah. Cause like, I don't know how Robin stayed with him as long as she did, man, because <laughs> he was never at fucking home. <laughs> True. He was always at somebody's tattoo shop. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, he, you know, he did Mondays at Shamrock, man, and he was, doing, you know, <laughs> always somewhere doing something, man. It was crazy. Yeah. yeah. Always gone. Good you time. Know? And I... And I and I love that about him. And man, that's, you know, losing him was kind of one of the things that really kind of uh, got me fucking going on this thing, man, because I, w I was really, um, really bummed for a long time. And I, and I know, I think I talked about this before, man, I wanted to do a book. And um, uh, this, this, this idea stemmed about eight or 10 years ago. And I wanted to send a book with uh, in the back was a list of all the fucking tattooers and their addresses, right? And then when the book came to you, then you just fucking wrote your story in it because I really wanted it, the, the, the craziest fucking story from the tat shop. You know what I mean? I just, I want the craziest shit. And, and get ready because I'm going to ask you that question because we all got to, we all got to know what the craziest fucking sh shit is, man. Cause, cause this shit don't happen to these kids and they're never going to have that moment, man. You know what I mean? 
Yeah. They're, they're, they're never going to have that moment when three girls walk in and take off all their clothes and they're like, oh, where would you like to tattoo us? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> that just doesn't happen anymore. But, um, but where was I at? What was I talking about? I don't even freaking remember. <laughs> but fuck it anyways, man. Um, uh, but the stories from the tattoo shops. Oh, that's what I was talking about with that book. And I, and I never got a chance to actually give that fucking, get that thing off the ground and let it fucking go around and fucking, you know what I mean? Let everybody kind of, uh, what up, Dave? Just, you know, write in it, man. And then to have those stories, man, you know what I mean? Yeah, that would, that'd be a thick ass book. <laughs> Dude, oh, fuck yeah, bro. Yeah, that would, it would definitely be more than a fucking coffee table book. It would probably be the coffee table exactly you know what I'm saying <laughs> fuck there's a so, reason that uh, Psycho City was called Psycho City <laughs> oh dude I, I have heard stories man I have heard That's stories ridiculous yeah, I don't well, think, Jojo I, was... I, don't think I could pick a one story that would be the craziest <laughs> <laughs> you know what Jojo just said a, told us a couple stories man and his fucking dude and I was dying man i was dying yeah you know it was, it was interesting <laughs> yeah i'll bet so it, it, a story that comes to mind at psycho city just any fucking story oh my god so many um well, i got a good one that involves jojo from one night. perfect perfect uh, let's throw it to the bus him and i were there late tattooing and this uh group of uh gangster ass black girls come into the tattoo shop right and right. they're hood as fuck and uh me and him wind up we start tattooing a couple of them and there was this big girl that was with them and jojo's gonna remember this already <laughs> <laughs> he just said yep <laughs> So this, so they're fucking ghetto as fuck, like scary ghetto to where me and Jojo are like, fuck, let's get them out of here, you know? So we're just tattooing, bullshitting, having a good old time. And this big girl that's with them, gangster as fuck, kept fucking, she's all, I got a stomach ache. Fucking, she's all, I got to take a shit, you know? And her, her homies were just like, calm down, girl, stop that shit. And then a few minutes later, she just straight hikes up her ass and farts like gnarly big girl fucking fart, right? And her friends are all, what the fuck? She's all, I told y'all I got the shit a brick. <laughs> <laughs> and me and Joe are fucking dying, right? Oh, so I can imagine. Fucking, we finally finished the tattoo. And fucking, they're like, hey, y'all want to go out back in the alley and smoke a blunt with us? And back then we were smoking still or whatnot. And they're like, yeah, why yeah. not? You know, we go back and we're in the alley fucking smoking this blunt. And they're getting ready to split. And the big ass black girl was just like, you all some cool ass fucking skinheads. <laughs> 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 we're like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> uh, it was fucking... That was a good one. <laughs> dude, that is a good one, man. That is a good one, dude. That is a good one. Well, you know, and JoJo was, dude, JoJo was telling us a bunch of fucking stories because of the bar situation and where you guys were at right there was just fucking nuts. Oh, Everybody yeah. who was anybody was right there at that moment. Yeah. Yeah, between the gay bar, the church, fucking just, it was very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and then, where did you go after you left Psycho City, man? Did you go to Huntington? No, actually, when I left Psycho City after that 12 years, I moved up to Southern Oregon, and uh, I had a private spot for four years and then wound up moving over because Jeff Gogway was in the same town in Grants Pass, and right. uh, we, we had been hanging out quite a bit, painting and all that kind of stuff. That's how I learned how to oil paint. And, right. Uh, we, we decided oh, to bummer. Yeah. <laughs> bummer. Fucking bummer. <laughs> we decided to work together and I did that for a couple of years and I was just ready to be back in Southern California at that point. 
and uh, that's when I wound up at HB Tattoo, and I was there for a few years, and then um, I actually went over and worked with Corey Miller in Upland at Six Feet right. Under for a year after I left HB Tattoo. Dude, I got a wicked fucking Corey Miller tattoo, man. Oh, it's no. right. This one right here. Oh, sweet. Dude, nine, the 91 National Convention upstairs in his hotel room, 60 bucks. Rad. <laughs> Dude. There were strippers dance jumping on the bed, dude. Some, <laughs> dude, somewhere, bro, somewhere. Because I had a, I had, I had this huge VHS camera, and I don't know where the fuck I got it. I don't know where the fuck it went, right? But, <laughs> dude, I had this huge HP camera, or this huge fucking video camera, man. And I'm walking around with this thing, fucking, you know, like filming all this shit. And I took it up, man, and I set it up, set it on the table. And I got video of the whole fucking thing going down, man. It was crazy. We were up there in his room for like, I don't know, it seemed like two hours, three hours or some shit like that. And dude, man, I was, that's when I found out that national fucking tattoo conventions are crazy. Uh, yeah, new JoJo, that. national tattoo, crazy, super crazy. <laughs> I, I miss those very much. I think I my first one wasn't until, uh, I think, 94 was the first one I actually went to with the guys. Yeah. Because I had started having kids young and all that kind of stuff, so it was a little tougher for me to travel back then. But once I started yeah. going to that shit, I was just like, what is this? It was fucking amazing. And I got... I met so many great people at those conventions. And that was another thing that was great about that was you could take your family to that convention. Right. You know, because of the banquet dinner and all the cool shit that you would do before you tattoo and all that. Right. So it was definitely amazing, amazing time. Yeah. Man. Yeah. And dude, I was just going to bring up, you tattooed at the Ink Slinger Ball, at Ink Slinger's Ball a few times as well, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. That was the show that was fucking crazy. That was you want to hear the, the, I'll tell you what the craziest fucking story is. One, so I, I get this. I, I owned, I own a shop in La Jolla at this point in fucking La Jolla. What was I thinking? Putting a shop in La Jolla? I don't fucking know, bro. I'm like, oh, oh, this is gonna, be, this is gonna be big, man. You know what I mean? So, anyways, long story short, so I'm in La Jolla, man. I got this guy named Robert Beck working for me. A really great guy, man. The it, dude, Beck was on. Beck was having a moment in his life for sure during that time. Anyway, so we, I'm I'm having him work with me the weekend or whatever, and and then and I think Cruzman was coming up for the for the Sunday or some shit like that. I don't remember exactly what was happening, but um, so dude, fucking he goes to the. He ends up going. Me and my chick ended up. I don't know how we ended up at the Viper Room in the VIP booth with Jessica Hahn. No shit. <laughs> yeah, Jessica Hahn's got her fucking hand down my wife's top, trying to fucking make out with her, trying to just get her to come back to the fucking house. And I'm like, oh, what the fuck is going on here? But meanwhile, Beck runs over to fucking Tattoo Mania to the barbecue and gets socked the fuck up by fucking a couple of the dudes that were chilling around in front, if you know what I mean. Anyways... <laughs> Ends up going to the hospital, fucking lost three teeth, man, fucking the whole thing. Doesn't show up the next fucking day, and I'm trying to figure out his fucking appointments are there, you know what I mean? Everybody's waiting, we're on the floor. Like, what the fuck, man, happened, you know what I mean, or whatever. Dude, he ended up in the fucking hospital. I got a fucking phone call at about, oh, I don't even remember. I guess it was like fucking one thirty in the afternoon. I'm like, where the fuck are you? He goes, I'm in the fucking hospital, dude, you know what I mean? <laughs> talking out the side of his mouth like I'm fucked up I'm like fucking fucking blah 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 man and I just remembered man I was like oh fuck man how did that fucking shit happen it just gets so crazy at those things man you know what I mean like dude the, the, later on about that fucking story gets a little bit fucking sideways so I'll just keep that apart but at the same time <laughs> man, dude like I, it was just craziness man I mean people fucking in the bathrooms fucking doing cocaine just Dude, any, anything, anything goes the way it should be. <laughs> Dude, 
Cheers to that, bro. Cheers to that, man. <laughs> Yeah, totally. It all started because of my pink shirt. Oh, dude, that's right, man. Jeff Jeff Page was in a booth next to me that one year, and dude, we got in a big old fucking hassle with a bunch of fucking a bunch of dudes because of Jeff. Jeff was wearing a fucking pink shirt, <laughs> dude. And, and dude, yeah, dude, for sure, Robert. Those days are gone, man. We can't have fun like that anymore. It's the fucking the solidarity police. I'm wow, here good. to fucking start those days again, Robert. <laughs> well, you know, man, that's one of the fuck. One, that's one of the reasons, bro, that I'm starting to do this thing, man, is because, like, you know what I mean, like, dude, the, you know, I, I I told this story a little while ago. I, I'm standing in a coffee shop downtown. I was living downtown in L.A. for a little bit, standing in this coffee shop, and I see this guy's got a few fucking tattoos and shit like that, man, and I and I'm like, oh, oh, hey, man, you know, we start chatting up. He notices mine. I notice his. We start chatting it up a little bit. Blah, 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 you know what I mean? And he's all like, I'm like, oh, oh it, you know, he goes, uh, yeah, it's something about his shop. And I was like, oh, oh, you own a shop? He's like, yeah, I own this fucking shop. And I was like, oh, cool. I've never heard of that shop. And he goes, where, where are you from? And I'm like, I'm from Burt Grimm's. And he goes, Burt who? <laughs> of course. Now, now, mind you, bro. Ten fucking years ago. <laughs> Lefty calling me out. <laughs> yes, I did fire my gun outside the shop two nights ago. <laughs> uh, you want to see the surveillance video? <laughs> that I would love to see, bro, for sure. Because I remember being in, I, I remember coming into work at Burt Grimm's. Man, and, and for some reason, I needed to have the day off. I think my old lady had a fucking OBGYN appointment or some or pussy hurt or whatever the fuck it was. And um, so, um, or maybe she was pregnant at the time. I don't know. But um, anyways, I ended up taking her to the doctor. And I remember coming in for my for my my helper shift when I was doing my, you know, apprenticeship. And um, Rick's like... Yeah, I tattooed these motherfuckers. They came in here and they got fucking tattooed, man. And fucking, I went in the back and they came back out and they were outside, man. And he goes, I walked outside very casually. I just mind adding you. And now, mind you, you know where Burke Grimm's is. The fucking police station is right there. <laughs> Dude, and he unloaded his whole clip in that car going out because there was only one place to park. <laughs> <laughs> and they had parked right there, and he drove by. He unloaded his whole fucking, his whole clip in that fucking car. And I was like, Jesus, man. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, He's fuck, like, oh, man. Fuck yeah, I hope I hit one of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People are too fucking worried about fucking feelings these days. You know what I mean? Joe just brought up another good one about the paintballs and the fucking winos in the back alley of the tattoo shop. We had some fun oh. with that too. We had those uh, those concrete enclosures for the dumpsters to where right. they would lock them up or whatever. Well, the fucking homeless would get in there and they would just thrash it. It'd be full of fucking trash and all kinds of fucking nonsense. Right. Well, the, the trash guys wouldn't pick none of that shit up. They would just empty the dumpsters, lock it back up, so it would just fill up and fill up with all kinds of bullshit. So, uh, or one day, fucking, there was a group of them hanging out out there, and I can't remember who got a hold of them, but somebody got a hold of some uh, pepper spray, some pepper spray grenades. Ooh. I, I think it was, I don't remember who fucking actually did it, but someone walked over there and just lobbed one into there, and that fucker went Little encampment. was just this big plume of smoke. You hear fucking people screaming, fucking bloody murder, right? I'm fucking freaking out. And all these fools come pouring out of there. Well, there was this one fucking homeless dude that had been around that area for fucking longer than I had been tattooing. And we called him Old Red. He was just this yeah, fucking right. crazy ginger fucking gnarly ass fool, right? And yeah. he comes walking out of there. Fucking like nothing happened with his chest pumped up with his shirt off, walking right through the smoke, right towards us. Like, what the fuck? And we're just like, oh, <laughs> shit, it's all red. So fucking me and Pike and Jojo were like, fuck that. We ran in the shop and locked the fucking doors. 
<laughs> That's <laughs> funny, man. Hilarious. Old Red was not one to be fucked with. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine that, man. And I remember, man, I, 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 dude, I did my first tattoo. <laughs> of I I did too, actually, and it was a fucking yeah. Viking off of Jack Rudy's Flash. <laughs> Yeah, I did a fucking dragon off of some Phil Sims flash. Nice. <laughs> yeah, and fucking. So the the day that I'm, you know what I mean? I just fi- finished. I just finished a couple of days making my tubes, making my tubes. Okay, mind you. So, <laughs> which if any of you fucking guys know or have even tried to make a fucking tube before, fuck, <laughs> fuck that. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Like, anyways. So, um. He and we're driving up, and he goes, "Hey man, Rick, Rick used to pull up in the morning and pick me up, man, and drive me down to the tattoo shop, and then I would pull a double because I would do my apprentice, I'd do my apprenticeship all day long, and then I'd work for the guys at night, man, till midnight, you know. So um, he would pick me up, and uh, he goes, "Hey man, you got any money on you?" And I'm like, "Oh, for what, man?" He goes, "Do you have any fucking money on you?" And I was like, "Oh." Well, what do you need, man? You know what I mean? And mind you, at this time, I'm fucking stone cold sober, man. I've been sto- sober about, I don't know, man, maybe seven months or some shit like that after a fucking really bad tweak binge, man. You know what I mean? For that lasted a few years. You know what I mean? So, um, uh, anyways, I was like, yeah, I got like, your nose after you said that. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking habit, bro. It's habit. You know what I mean? It's just habit. But anyways, um, so uh, I go, yeah, I think I got five bucks or whatever. And he goes, cool. So there's this little liquor store on the side, man. You know what I mean? And, and I can't remember this fucker's name, but he used to always sleep it on the steps going down to the tattoo shop from Ocean Boulevard, you know? And um, uh, so Rick pulls up in front of the liquor store and he goes in there and he goes, now go buy, go buy a bottle of Ripple. I was like, what? He's like, go in there and buy a bottle of Ripple right now. And I'm like, oh, Rick, neither one of us drink. He goes, go buy a bottle of fucking Ripple. <laughs> so I go in there and I buy a bottle of Ripple, man, and I fucking walk in. Rick, Rick grabs the fucking bottle from from me, you know what I mean, or whatever, man. And and I open up the gates of heaven, you know, which I used to call fucking Bergrams. And, uh, and, and he goes, hey, man, is dude out there right now? And I'm like, oh, yeah. And he goes, go tell him that if he lets you tattoo him, that you'll give him a bottle of Ripple. And I was like, what? And he goes, go tell him, man, you want to tattoo, man. Today's the day you get to tattoo. And I was like, damn, dude. I walked out there so stoked. And I got about three feet away from him, and I could just smell him. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> I was like, yo, dude, Rick wants to know if you want to if you want to get tattooed and get a bottle of Ripple. And he's all, what, I get a tattoo and a bottle of Ripple? That's a fucking, that's, that's a deal. I'm in, you know? <laughs> and I just remember, man, shaving him down. And I just remember the dirt coming off oh, him God. with the fucking straight razor. Yeah. You know what <laughs> I mean? Because, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, everybody, man, we used to use straight razors. <laughs> Why we ever stopped? I don't know. Because that fucking yeah. shit that we use now just sucks. You know what I mean? Dude, fuck, but, we had the fucking, we didn't even have paper towels, dude. Mike's dad bought fucking Kleenex. You know how much of a oh, yeah. air it is to fucking do a tattoo with Kleenex? Oh, it's fucking horrible. That's what Rick, man, Rick fucking tried to get me to wrap that shit, man, and dab it. And rip it. he's like, oh, are you fucking retarded? You can't do that shit? <laughs> dude, I, I like, still dude. wrap my fingers. Do you? I, I can't do a tattoo unless my fingers are wrapped. Yeah, dude, I have, I have always, I have always folded it, folded a paper towel all the way down to where it's a a rectangle, right? And, and held it in my hand while I was stretching Mm -hmm. to, 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 to keep the skin from moving. And that's just the only way, because I mean. We didn't have fucking armrests. Arm fucking rest. What's a fucking armrest? I don't have an (laughs) armrest. You don't? (laughs) No. But you remember, you remember just kicking your foot up on the fucking, on the, on the, on the chair, man. And then just like getting their arm and just like fucking, dude, my buddies, we were talking the other day and he's all like, man, I don't know whether you're, 
I don't know whether your fucking grip hurt worse with a tattoo. He goes, it was fucking horrible. That's that fucking biker grip, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. Oh, yeah, dude. My ex-wife used to, my ex-wife used to really complain about it. You know what I mean? <laughs> so once you got that grip, man, you got that grip, man. You know what I mean? Some of them like it, some of them don't. You know what I'm saying? But um, let me let me ask you this: a memorable story traveling. Traveling. Um, I'd have to say my first trip to Europe. Um. I had gotten invited by this guy named Mark Marcus Blackney um, to come and work in Germany, and uh, I wound up setting up something with him. And then I got hit up from the guy that was doing the Evian convention in France. Oh, and that yeah, was yeah. the first year of the convention. And he had heard I was going to be in Germany around that time. So he had asked me if I wanted to come by and do the convention. I was like, fuck yeah, you know. And uh, it just kind of was this ripple effect. Because then I had gone to the national convention that year. And Henning Jorgensen hit me up. He's like, I hear you're going to be in Germany. Why don't you come work at the shop? I was like, fuck, you tell me when. I'll be there, you know. (laughs) Yeah, totally. At this one little guest spot for a week turned into a two month straight trip to Europe to where I was in. It was great because, uh, I went to Germany, uh, Denmark, Sweden, France. And then, um, it just so happened that that Evian convention was right across the lake from when, uh, Philip had his street shop there still in Switzerland, right across the lake. So I got to shoot across the lake and stay a few days over there and hang out at Philip's shop while he was there. And he was a fucking amazing dude. So I think that trip by far, just as many people as I got to hang out with and have a great time with was amazing for sure. Yeah. That's one of the things I think I'd like to do somewhere towards the end of the summer is just go and hang in Europe, man, and just kind of just trip around and just, you know what I mean? That's great. Dude, I've been I, I've been threatening I, I've been threatening Hanky with fucking showing up there and do you know what I mean and shit like that, man. And every time I get a chance to go there, then I'm fucking ended up having to go to Japan or or somewhere else instead, man. And you know it just gets you know this tat game is fucking crazy, man. And there's people that get they get pissed, man, when you're when you're they're like, oh, where the fuck are you? When are you gonna come home? When are you gonna fucking tattoo me? Fuck you! What, what the fuck are you doing? You know what I mean? Dude, they're like, I'm tra- fucking traveling. They're like, oh, fuck you. Get back here and tattoo me. What the fuck? You know? <laughs> there was Sorry, a, one time I did a guest spot in Virginia, and my friend Lefty LaPuma fucking almost killed me in a car accident. <laughs> Dude, I was wondering what the fucking, what that that uh, death car was. <laughs> he doesn't That's like funny. to tell that story. <laughs> What up, Mike? Yeah, dude, it's super funny, man. Dude, uh, you know, and and I'm so glad that we have these fucking stories in this time, man, to, to be able to talk about it, man. You know what I mean? And and um, uh, we got a minute and twenty seven, just a sh- just shot a little over a minute left, man. Do you want to jump back on and talk a little more, or or, or yeah. what, brother? Yeah, whatever works. I'm gonna have to grab cool. another beer, but. <laughs> yeah, grab a beer. I'm going to take a piss. We'll be back in five, everybody, man. We'll see you in a minute. Thank you for joining us, man. We'll talk to you in a minute. All right, brother? All right. Cheers. Bye. Hey, we're back. That was quick. Man. Even for an old guy, I'm pretty quick. So, anyways, hey, by, by the way, man, anybody who wants to throw out a comment or wants to throw out a DM, let me know how it's going. Let me know what, what's going on, what you think. Hey, man, and, like, if you know anybody who you want to hear from, man, bring it on, man. I, I'd love to talk to everybody. So, anyways, hey, there he is. What's up, brother? What's up? Hey, so, man, I, I asked you to grab a couple of tat banging machines. Did you Did you grab any of those from the... No, no, you did not. I, 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 I knew you wouldn't, dude. I, I, for some reason, I just knew you. 
I'm pretty sure I have a couple. They're the last couple that were super cool that I built. I actually had to ship out today. So, oh, nice. God. <laughs> you got, yeah, they're gone. Well, thank God, bro, that they're gone. Because, man, you know what I mean? They need to be out there and they need to be doing their thing, man, for sure. Cool. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's been it's fun. Think, are you building anything great? Are you doing anything else after those ones went out? Uh, yeah, I'm constantly have something in the works. Um, I've had a bunch of stuff I've had to take care of here at the tattoo shop. Um, I just got commission to do another painting for the owner of uh, second floor in Huntington beach. I don't know if you've ever been to that. Oh, but I, I, dude, I did a I love that him, place. Uh, quite a few years ago and uh, they actually had it printed on vinyl and cut out and put on the face of the stairs. So when Ooh. you walk up and wait in line, you just saw a big giant dragon that I had painted. So oh, nice. Yeah, he just hit me up the other day, and they're redoing the stairs, so I'm going to do a painting for those guys. So I've been kind of trying to figure some stuff out with that and just regular shop shit that I've been wanting to do and just haven't had the time, and obviously I have plenty of time right now, so just been you know what's a, in between. Yeah, it's there. Dude, I know. But I'll tell you one of the things, every time that I do go out, man, and I do it, you know, maybe once a week, man, I try to go and make my rounds and do do what I need to do, man, other than the little hit and runs, you know what I mean, to the liquor store or whatever. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, dude, I just noticed this fucking massive amounts of good construction going on everywhere right now. The fuck is going on with that, man? I swear to God. Nuts. <laughs> fucking crazy man everybody's fucking remodeling doing this doing that doing this and i'm like oh dude man ascent they're all essential i guess yeah you know? yeah dvs fucking facelift yeah my neighbor at my machine shop because i live like 40 minutes outside of town from the tattoo shop out in the middle of the forest and my machine shop is on the same property as my house and my neighbor is uh construction yeah, yeah. guy contractor dude and he said he's fucking slammed busy still just working every day yeah dude i i was just calling one of my buddies the other day man and he's all like what's up man and i'm like what are you doing man and i'm like all oh, dude i'm chilling what are you doing he goes man i'm putting in a fucking bathtub right now dude you know what i mean i'm <laughs> like oh like, dude, you know, and usually he's the one that wants to sit on the phone and chat all the time. And I was like, oh, OK, bro, I get it now. Yeah, you go. You go get it, man. You go get it. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> I, can, I, I tell you what, man, I cannot wait to get back to the tattoo shop and get back into tattooing. Mm -hmm. And I, I you know, dude, even for me, it's just hanging out with the guys and being in a tattoo shop. I don't even have to be fucking tattooing all day. Just the, the environment, you know? Well, I think that that's kind of the fucking drug we're all fucking strung out on is the tat shack. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, dude, I, I fucking miss my homies. I miss the people that I get to tattoo with. I miss fucking that. I miss that sound. Yeah. Just the sound. I mean, fuck, almost 30 years of your life I know being somewhere every day that whole time it's well over half our lives you know so it just and nobody really there. realizes that you know what I mean like you know one of the things that I that I get a lot man is there people don't really realize how fucking busy we are and and, and I mean not only just you, fucking Joe, Joe. but family fucking uh you know, kids, fucking, um, you know, music, man, what, whatever it is, whatever your other, you know, passion is, man. I, I play music all the time. I'm always in the recording studio because I just love to fucking make music, man. You know what I mean? That's my, that's my jam, dude. I've been doing it for since I was a kid. But painting, man, and fucking trying to keep up on the drawings that are going on and 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 shit like that, man. You know what I mean? It's just been. It's just nuts that we pretty much work seven days a week. Oh, yeah, definitely. For 30 years. Typically, uh, even if I'm not tattooing, I'm at the tattoo shop seven right. days a week. 
you know. And fortunately, I do have the machine shop to get away if I need to, especially right now with everything going on. And right. it's next to my house, which helps a bunch. So it gives me something to do. Right. But it's the tattoo shop's a whole different fucking thing. That's just your life, you know. Yeah, man, and and you know, I just I'll tell you what, man. I don't, I don't. I'm just gonna be perfectly flat out fucking honest with you. I don't have enough space on my legs to go another fucking two months. Without <laughs> tattoo. Dude, yeah. I tattooed, dude, I tattooed myself for two hours and forty five minutes fucking a couple weeks ago. Oh fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said in about an hour and 15 minutes. <laughs> I was like, Jesus Christ, what the fuck am I doing, man? <laughs> I'm definitely. But it was a cover up of my ex-wife. So it was, it, it, you know what I mean? It didn't hurt as much as what happened with her. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm all good, dude. I'm all good. I'm good. But yeah, man, I just, uh, you know what I mean? I just picked up, um, uh, I've been wanting to get a Chris Cockrell tattoo machine for a while. I use a lot, um, I've been pretty much, because I've been working for Sam Phillips down at American Tattoo um, probably for 10 years. Mm-hmm. So after I closed La Jolla, I, I, I went up to, and was doing all my appointments out of um, out of uh, American Tattoo when it was in Bonzel. So Dude, as he started coming up, man, I mean, I've got some of his first his first prototypes and stuff like that that I just um, that I just love, man. I I, I actually gave uh, um, uh, Yusuke from uh, from Japan one of them, man, to, to go and tattoo because I don't know if you've you know that you know Yusuke the, the bonsai guy. Uh, not that I can think of. Uh huh. Okay. Dude, this guy is a is probably one of the top five bonsai masters in all of Japan, dude. And he's fucking tattooed from fucking head to toe. I mean, like covered. You know what I mean? Except for his face right here. But um, uh, he he did a he was doing some tattoos when he was over here, man, and they were looking fucking super good. And I was like, oh, well, here here's a power supply, and here's a fucking machine and some tubes. Just fucking go and practice. Go do what you got to do, man. I mean, dude, you know what I mean? Like, I let him, we actually tattooed each other at my pad because he was staying with me when he was here. You know what I mean? And I was like, dude, I want you to tattoo me. And he's like, this is my 10th tattoo that I've ever done. You know what I mean? And I was like, oh, fuck it, dude. Just fucking get into it, bro. You know what I mean? You know, what I, mean? You know I got Thomas Pendleton's first tattoo. I got Opie's first tattoo with a real machine. You know what I mean? Like, dude, I got, I got some, I got some stuff, but, um, and he just fucking killed it. The fucking lines were so crisp. And now, dude, that guy's paintings are amazing, dude. Like, he's just painting up a storm. I don't know if he's really tattooing over there at all. But his paintings are just... All he does is paint fucking dragons and bonsais and tigers and panthers and bonsais and shit like that all together, man. Super uh-huh. traditional. Super badass. Fucking so cool. I'll have to check it out. I seem to remember hearing you were going to switch over to that thing Robert was talking about. That one for well, the weaker of wrist. <laughs> oh, the weak of wrist, man. Yeah, I actually, um, I kind of switch off between that. Um, I, I, uh, because of the fact that we're at, at Studio City, we're such a production shop mm-hmm. that it and and we work six hour shifts. There isn't a whole lot of time. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's what, that. That was a time saver for me. You know what I mean? Don't and, make it. You know, <laughs> yeah, dude. Whatever. And my weak wrist, bro. And my <laughs> fucking weak wrist, Mike. Jesus fucking. Christ. But anyways, but um, uh, I have a really, I have an old Mickey Sharps that I love that that uh, Sam rebuilt for me, man. That's just a, a wicked powder shader and. And um, I use a couple of his when I'm doing traditional stuff and I'm doing bangers. If I, if I do anything that's over two or three hours, um, I'll, I'll go to the Zion. Um, uh, it's, it's FK irons, man. You know what I mean? And they were, they were machine builders before this whole fucking thing came out. Gay weak wrist. Thanks lefty. I appreciate <laughs> it. Appreciate it, dude. Dude. That's funny. Dude, because I gotta, I gotta, it was, I gotta flip my fat ass and a fucking, you know what I mean, and a guitar <laughs> and a fucking dude. It's a gay ass weak wrist. Probably from way too much masturbation is probably what it is. I'm just, I'm gonna throw it out there. Fuck it. I, mean, I was uh, 
in Salt Lake City at the convention a couple of years ago, and uh, my buddy Shag, do you, you know who Shag is? He does yeah, yeah, the yeah. D12 and or the D10, whatever the fuck it is. And right. uh, great guy, I fucking love him. We've been friends for quite some time, and I was walking around the convention, and he had just uh, put out that one that's called the One. Or whatever, and yeah. there was a lot of my friends were using it, and I was right. of course talking shit because I'm a smart ass, fucking nonstop to everyone. Yeah. Running Nobody's around. ever talked shit to me about that shit ever. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. And fucking so I, I'm passing by Shag's booth. He was a couple booths down from me, and he's like, "Hey, Mike, what's up?" I'm like, "What's up, bro?" And he's like, "I hear you're telling everybody they got fucking weak wrists, right?" <laughs> I kind of shit. Yeah. <laughs> so I sat down in his booth and fucking bullshitted him with him for a while. And uh I fucking I always stay in Salt Lake an extra week or so after the convention and hang out with the guys at the shop and do a right. tattoo party and whatnot. And uh I show up back home at the shop and there's a box in the Okay, there we are. Now we're back. Hopefully, Mike will just jump back on really quick. And we'll get the rest of this story about the fucking mystery box that came in the fucking mail. We all know what was in the box. It was a severed head. <laughs> what up, Sean? How are you today, man? Oh, by the way, I painted a dragon. I'm going to have to show you it. Uh, it's kind of kind of, kind of sucky, though. I wanted to send you a picture of it, but I'll just show it to you instead right there. Just painted a dragon, man. I'm trying to be cool like all the rest of the kids. It's all Sumi. Super fun. <laughs> fun, awesome. <laughs> Dude, thank you for being so kind, bro. Thank you. The dragon master himself. What's up, bro? Okay, so what's in the fucking box, bro? <laughs> my fucking phone overheated somehow. I've never seen oh, that happen. It's all the oh, shit. Dude. <laughs> yeah, totally, dude. They, these fucking phones suck. They're a thousand dollars worth of fucking suck. Exactly. So, anyways, I show up home, fucking have this box in the mail, and it's from Shag. And I open it up, and there's a little note on top that says, "Here's for your weak ass wrists, fool." Oh shit! <laughs> and it was one of those fucking the one machines, you know. I was like, "Oh fuck." So, of course, I'm like, well, I got to fucking try it, right? Yeah, you got to try it. I'm doing this huge back piece on one of the guys that works for me, and he's a big dude, and it's a, just giant fields of black and gray. So right. I bust this thing out and try it out on him with a 15 mag. Yeah. And I, I fucking got done, and all I text Shag was, fuck you, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's, you know, that's one of the fucking things, dude, is that, like, what really sucks about that whole thing is fucking, they fucking work. They can. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, dude, I mean, I am, when it comes down to outlining anything, I'm pretty much, man, I, I, I do, you know what I mean? I'm always loyal to the coil, man. I, I can collect more outliners than I could fucking shake a stick at because I, I, I love the feel of it. Because those yeah. things feel like shit trying to pull a fucking line. I can do it, mm -hmm. but but I don't I've like never it. Never cut line with one at all. Yeah, but anyways, man, like <laughs> no, I didn't go to the dark side. <laughs> Nobody's going to the dark side, dude. Jesus, man, <laughs> fucking may the fourth be with you, bro. But, but anyways. <laughs> But this is one of the coolest things. Yeah, it's gay. It's, of course it's fucking gay, Lefty. Fuck, man. Dude, we're tattooers. We're all fucking gay, but you know what I mean? Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ, dude. dude. I swear uh, to God. But anyways, but Robert talking about that fucking, that machine, man, he's like, oh, fuck, I didn't want to like it. Yeah, right. Nobody wants to like them. You know what I mean? I mean, really? like, really, man, when it comes to, you know what I mean? I'm just saying. And I can I can understand it too, like coming from guys like him, like he tattoos fast as fuck. Yeah, that's you know? how I tattoo so, too. I'm fast. I mean, I'm fast, but not like fucking those guys are. You know, I do yeah. big large scale work faster than most, but 
Right. Like guys like Joe and Robert and fucking a lot of dudes I know that have been doing that large scale shit for a long time. Like I can see them outlining with something like that. I just yeah. have never fucking felt the need to try it, you know? Yeah, I get it. And I, and totally, man. And and next and next week and next <laughs> Monday night, man, I got Franco. Franco's gonna come on and we're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about the difference between shit. You know what I mean? Because I know that you know Franco's been around the block, man. You know what I mean? And and he has taken that fucking stance. And he's you know he's he's a big supporter of tattooing and what tattooing stands for and all that stuff. So you know what I mean? You got to have the visa with the versa. You know what I mean? And 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 honest to God, man, I think that there is a there's a tool for everything. You know what I mean? There's a tool for everything. And my, I stick with the ones I've been using for 30 years. <laughs> I know, but fuck that, dude. Dude, seriously, man, if I hadn't been playing guitar as fucking much as I have for as many years as I have, man, my, my fucking weak ass wrists are fucked up, dude. And I want to keep <laughs> tattooing, dude. I want to keep tattooing until I'm 70, man. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. fuck. Yeah. Dude, what's, let me just, let me just, let, let's just talk a little bit about that. So I want to tattoo when I'm 70. Dude, I got fucking. I've worked with kids that have been tattooing for three years and they're like, Oh my fucking back. Yeah. <laughs> I think the wrist thing and the hand thing has a lot to do with what you start with, you know, cause I mean, we started with tiny ass tubes and heavy ass machines. That's what fucked me up, dude, was those tiny ass fucking tubes and them heavy ass machines. I think it made me better as far as being able to not have issues with my hands and stuff like that. Yeah, I haven't had any issues since I fucking switched over to the one inch grips. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then those, but those, dude, I mean, like, so I started off obviously, obviously on Jim Dandy's. You know what I mean? And pretty much for the first two and a half, three years, man, that's pretty much primarily what I used up, to, up until I bought a set of Mickey Sharps, a, a micro and a, and a T-Dial. Um, and then that's when I started kind of going outside the box, man. And I bought, I bought something off, uh, that guy, Ryan Downey. And then, you know what I mean? And then I, you know, kind of, kind of went around, bought, bought a piece off of Juan and, and, you know, Dridgenberg and dude, and literally, man, I fucking swear to God, Dan Dridgenberg makes the best shaders I've ever fucking used, man. I love those fucking <laughs> things, man. I fucking love them, dude. They're, they're, they, they put in such a nice fucking gray wash. It's crazy. You know what I mean? Dan's just fun to fucking talk to, much less. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I love Danny, man. He's fucking so good. But, man, I mean, think about it, man, and, and think, you know, back to back to what you said earlier about if a guy knows how to do good tattoos, he's going to know how to do a good tattoo machine. Yeah, for sure. So, you well, know. Most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> So what is let's let's just let's just since we're talking about machines, what's your what's your oldest and favorite most favorite? Oh man, my oldest and most favorite. Most of them are all in shadow boxes on the wall right here behind me now. Yeah, um, I mean, fuck, I tattooed with Mike Pike for fucking twelve years and his dad right. two years before that. So of course, that's mostly what I used. My first two machines were. Um, national swing gates right which run, ran like fucking garbage like oh, i remember <laughs> i was just started tattooing and uh cap zumsky came to mike's dad's shop because i don't know if you know cap zumsky apprenticed under mike's dad as well oh really no i didn't yeah. know that like years and years before me of course but uh, uh so he would come and visit and uh yeah, I remember he was giving me such a hard time and he picked up my machines. He's like, you fucking tattoo with these pieces of shit, you know? And he kind of fucked with them and tweaked them a little bit. And I was just like, oh my God, they actually do work, you know? Fuck. Wow. <laughs> yeah, <totally. laughs> and that was early 92, you know, fucking. But after that, like, I didn't have too many other machines besides ones that we would throw together in Pike's machine shop, you know? And do you pretty much use all your own machines at this point now? Build, build them for yourself? Actually, no, I don't. Every time I say I'm going to keep this one, I still wind up fucking selling it. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. 
Um, right now I have a couple that I've built that I've been using just cause I haven't gotten rid of them. Um, I have a Matt quality machine. That's a liner that I use quite a bit. Um, and a couple of mine, like I said, what else am I using? Super random shit that doesn't really run great. <laughs> yeah. Like, like my Matt quality liner is fucking amazing. Um, yeah. The rest of my stuff, I don't tend to fucking run really good machines for some reason. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I, you know what I mean? I got, I got a liner that I got from Norm that Norm built for me. And it runs like, it sounds like a fucking dude it it sounds like a beehive dude i mean it sounds so gnarly but man i'll tell you what man it puts in the crispest fucking lines i could possibly you know what i mean i always tell people i'll fucking you give me a toothpick i'll still do a good tattoo <laughs> that's that's <laughs> one thing about old school tattooers man you know and that's the you know thing about it is man is that if you ever stop and you start thinking about what would happen to all these younger tattooers that aren't paying attention if the if the power went out yeah you know what i mean <laughs> i know what we'd be doing we'd be out stealing batteries oh yeah shit from I, everywhere pike showed up at the shop <clears throat> one time at psycho city when me and jojo were there working and the power went out in some crazy storm pike showed up with a fucking generator and fucking we were still tattooing off that thing Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Do you still, do you, do you make any of your own needles? Not anymore. No, I did for a long fucking time after they started making the pre-mades. Um, mostly cause they were so fucking expensive at first. I was just like, fuck that. And I'll show up to work an hour early and make that shit, you know? Right. I think I didn't start buying disposable or pre-made needles I think fuck 2005 maybe 2006 that's about when I switched over yeah 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 totally what's your what's your what's your needle of choice man what do you like what what brands do you like right now what are you using um, I just use kingpin needles. They're great, the aren't they? Part. I I don't mind. There's a lot of people that don't like them, but I've never had an issue with them, and I've been using them a long time. Um, yeah, I, I love the black claw needles too. Um, but I'm pretty. I don't have a wide range of needles that I use either. You know, I typically will use a fucking a five liner and maybe a seven and a nine and then my mags 11 and 15 that's all I use. yeah yeah i usually don't go much below an, uh, an 11 either man i use a lot 11 13 15 19 um but i but because of the fact that i do a lot of fine line stuff too man especially where we're at here in la man and, and i do a lot of lettering man i'm using a lot of like type five tight sevens mm -hmm. you know what i mean fucking i, I and i and I'm very capable of single lining shit, but um, I've kind of switched over over the last few years and using uh, bug pin fucking really tight fucking long taper bug pins for my for my fine line single like single type needle. You know what I mean? Oh, nice. Just gets a better line. And, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. For sure. I tried using some bug pins for a while. Um, I was actually making my own mags around that time, like 2007, 2008. And yeah. I was using some bug pin needles from Icon at the time, making them. But I was, I think my style of tattooing, the machines I use and the saturation was just too much for those bug pins. They wouldn't fucking... They Saturate would, well? Too, they would give too much. Because right. I was trying to put that shit in there, and right. they just couldn't keep up with me. So, right. just, yeah, I've been using a lot of bug pins, uh, uh, especially when I'm doing black and gray. Just because Aaron Aaron Bell got me on that, he, he, he pretty much uses all bug pins. So, <clears throat> yeah, it's kind of crazy, but um, yeah, he got me on that thing. So, if I'm doing black and gray, any kind of black and gray, I'm probably using bug pins. 
you know what I mean? And I'm just using medium tapers, man. And I, I love Kingpin stuff. I've, I've stuck with them through thick and thin, you know what I mean? They're a great company then and they really take care of us. So yeah, it's really I've cool. Never, I never really messed with any of the medium taper stuff. It's all just 12 sharps, long taper, yeah. everything. Yeah. And I've just been using them for so long that, I mean, doing big, huge black and gray fucking back pieces and shit in the mid nineties with a four flat, you know, long taper needle. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The four and the six flat were amazing. Yeah. The six was a little gnarly depending, you know, but it was a little gnarly. <laughs> you could fucking you could chew some shit up with a flat. Yeah. <laughs> Real quick. But I that's mean, where I learned how to hang so much needle. Everybody's like, oh, fuck you. you are you tattooing here? You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, fuck, man. <laughs> yep, I know you, you know? do, Joe. 12 sharps all day, buddy. I know, dude. Man, it's like fucking... fucking, even talking with Greg James fucking a few years ago, still doing all that crazy, solid, fucking beautiful work, still using a four flat, you know? Oh, yeah. Nuts. Oh, yeah. That's lefties, all that's some old guy shit. <laughs> Dude, lefty, have you never tattooed with a flap? <laughs> Come on, lefty, you, you've had to have ta even tried it one time. He hasn't been tattooing long enough. <laughs> How long has he been tattooing, though? He's been tattooing 10 years, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, more than that. He's close. Were the carb carbon needles, dude? What's up with that? <laughs> Dude, never, never, never. Well, man, I'll tell you, man, if you haven't tattooed with a flat, man, flats are scary, man. They will, yeah, they will scare the shit out of a motherfucker, man. But if you can tattoo with a flat, you can tattoo with anything. Oh, there you go. 19 years. I knew I was close. Yeah, dude. Yeah, so I knew he'd been a long time. You can't, you can almost get interviewed by Chris. <laughs> yeah, dude. You never use, car I never use carbon needles. Have you? I haven't. I what the seen. fuck is it? Yeah, I mean, I remember hearing some shit about that, but... They were dude, pain thought... in the fucking ass because they would rust. So you would have to keep them in Vaseline. Ooh. Or they would fucking rust. Ooh. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's <laughs> like a... It's a textured needle is pretty much all it is. But... Yeah. They're gnarly. I do. I, I really do like some of the textured shit that uh, Black Claw has come out with and stuff like that. I like some of that stuff, man. It's pretty, pretty, pretty nice. I never steered away from what I'm used to very much. Well, you know, I mean, that's that's one of the things, man. I don't know why I, I've I've always just kind of jumped around and tried shit out, man, because I always wanted to know what a, a little bit about everything. You know, one of my buddies, one of my buddies, always told me this about me. He goes, "Hey, man, how come you?" He goes, you do just about everything, you know, music, you tattoos, fucking art, whatever, you know, cars, whatever, you know what I mean? He goes, but you never really sat down and were great at one of them. <laughs> it's one of my <laughs> best friends. I was like, fuck off, man. You know what I mean? Like, really, bro? You got to go there? And he's like, oh, dude, I'm just saying. I'm saying. <laughs> might want to want to fucking, might want to stop and focus on something, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know. Well, fuck him, you know. I just saw he's he was planning on going to fucking Disneyland, so fucking more power to him. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, man. Hey, dude, it has been an amazing evening talking to you. Thank you so much fucking for for taking the time out, man. And and we got to we got to do this again at some point, man. Yeah, I appreciate you. It was a good time for sure. Yeah, totally. And I definitely got to get up there and fucking see you, man. I, I, I'm I, I'm looking at doing a road trip sometime this year. So, man, I'll, I'll get up there and swing by, man. And I definitely, definitely, definitely want to fucking check out your your uh, your machines, man, because everybody, man, I swear to God, man, literally, I, I must have got 10 or 15 messages today, man. Like, I love my I love my God free tattoo machine blah, 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 throughout <laughs> the day. And it was rad. I'm like, oh, Jesus Good Christ. So, hey, man, we got to talk. No, so, anyways, <laughs> I'll call you up soon, man. Thank you so much. Peace and love to your family, bro, man. Thank you for doing everything that you do to uphold tattooing. And thanks for, man, sharing all your stories with us, man. I appreciate it so much. Appreciate you, too. And I appreciate everybody for watching. Hello to all my friends. Hope you're yeah, dude, doing well. The, yeah, dude. The best to all the homies out there, man. We'll get we'll get back to it, man. And, and, uh, and blessings to all of you, man. For sure. we'll see you later, brother.
Peace. Love you, man. Peace love and you. love. Bye. Later. Oh.